Welcome, everybody. Today, we're joined by a star-studded cast. And uh, I'm sure you guys might be wondering why I picked the four of you specifically. Oh, I'm so curious. <laughs> it's because this is going to be my second act. I'm joining the VCT Masters, and you guys are going to be my teammates. The only problem is I don't play Valorant, so <laughs> I'm going to need a pretty hard carry. I think, Mike, you were saying you might be in the same boat, so yes. just figure it out, get it done. Yeah. We need a championship. You could pocket Sage, Dre, okay. and yeah. I think we'll have a really good shot. I can shot. build a wall somewhere. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just heal me up, heal me up. All right. Steve Jobs are the underdogs. Drop jaws with the one more thing in the monologue. Keep them guessing what the reasons are. I don't got a chain of Mac stores. I already got genius bars. Turn a hobby into people all up in the lobby. Not Illuminati, this is Neil Literati. With an army here behind me, kid, don't even try me. Adam bombing anybody, we're the Ben and Bobby. Let the smoke blow, get the Bruce spilling. Debut a new villain like Ren and Doom chilling. My shoes are too winning for you to cruise in them. Timeless cool like blue denim, I'm losing them. Benita, uh, you recently left the team, is that's correct? Okay. Um, one of the main reasons my departure from CLG came at such a random time was communication. Yeah. Because I had taken three weeks off for my wedding and my honeymoon. And three weeks is, I guess, a long time for <laughs> like a lot of like team dynamic to like kind of change or like just like the communication around the team to change. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of felt like I didn't like, I don't know. It just felt like it was time for me to go. Like, yeah. you know, I came back from my honeymoon. I was like, all right, I don't think like this is for me anymore. Mm -hmm. wow. are, and, <laughs> are you done with competing in general or just CLG? Like, have you thought about um, that much? No, I'm not done competing. I have it in me for sure. I think, you know, I, I have so much experience and so much to bring to a team that like right now, if like I want to, I want to continue playing and I think, I don't know, it's just, especially like hopefully Valorant comes into LAN. Um, mm -hmm. This is a game that started in a pandemic. So the more LANs we get, like there aren't many girls who have the LAN experience that I do or some of, you know, some other girls that yeah. have I mean, it. For, so. for those who don't know, you've won how many world championships? Um, in my career, I, I don't know off the top of my head, but it's definitely just count after a while. Um, <laughs> definitely like in well, I played CS 1.6 and then CS GO and now Valorant, so it's three games. So um, I would probably say like ten. I probably have like ten first place. Like that, maybe. Yeah. yeah, that's that's yeah. crazy. Like it's it's awesome that you want to keep competing. Yeah. Because you know you have that much experience. It's it's great for the scene for you to keep competing, great for like whatever teammates you play with to be able mm -hmm. to share that. Yeah, I know the post, I got a lot of feedback that like the post that was like put out in social, like kind of looked like I was retiring or it kind of looked like, to be honest, like some people were saying like, it looks like an RIP post. Like it was kind of weird feedback, <laughs> like, but. Um, <laughs> Um, social like, media can be yeah. so dramatic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Remember everything. her name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, like, <laughs> I was thinking maybe I should put another tweet out there, like, hey, I am like still interested in competing, but and a lie. now, you know. <laughs> it was weird. My orcs said rest in peace when I was leaving. Like, it's weird. They bought me a casket. I don't have a lane to stay in. Associate with great women and great men. Never make time for a fake friend. Snakes never change. They just shed their snake skin. For our generation, I mean, I don't know, you've probably heard it from a lot of people, but Linkin Park was like, I actually feel like it was just such a staple mm -hmm. for growing up. You know, it, it kind of was the gateway that introduced people to other types of music too. Because Linkin Park, you know, it's like part rock, part rap, right? Mm. And then so many people, I, I knew like almost everybody liked Linkin Park, and then, but then people would branch out. It's like, yeah. you had some that went like the rock route, some that went like the rap route, and it brought them together. It's just uh, There weren't, people don't, cool. don't, I mean, I think, maybe this generation and and older remember there being like more separation in genre um because now nobody does that like if you ask a like a 12 year old what do you listen to they're like just start naming things they don't mm -hmm. they don't there's right. no like genre like people don't do yeah. that anymore and and when we grew up that was genre was like 
everything. Like oh, yeah. I literally didn't hang out with certain people at school because they listened to different, they listened to metal. Like I didn't, I was a hip hop kid. I was not a metal kid. That was, that was that. It, it's actually really funny you mentioned that because in like fourth grade, I got shunned by some of my friends because I like Papa Roach. And like, so you know, funny. I'm <laughs> so like, random. what's wrong? It's, it's a cool band. And they were just like, oh my God, you listen to that? And right. You're like, weird. weird. Yeah, I'm like, what's wrong with it? As a hip hop head, like how just absolutely, how was, was it crazy when you had the opportunity to work with people like Jay-Z were those, were, and, and 50 Cent? Were these people that were iconic figures in the hip hop scene for you specifically? Yeah, well, so I grew up listening to Jay. And the weirdest part of the whole Jay-Z thing was actually how it like ended. Like we, we, it started with just like making a couple tracks in the bus. Yeah. And by the end of it, we were on stage at the Grammys performing with Jay-Z and Paul McCartney of the Beatles. It was just like, it, it was all so surreal. And Paul, we almost like didn't think that he would say yes, but he was the first one to say yes. He came right back and was like, yeah, it sounds great. And then we had to convince Jay. Was, was that intimidating at all, going to Paul McCartney? Because, I mean, he's an absolute legend in the music world. Dude, it was world. so intimidating, yeah. The Beatles, it wasn't just that they were, they were like the biggest band of all time. It's that they're also, from, a, from like a technology and innovation standpoint, they actually invented modern recording. They actually invented ways that we all still, oh, things that we all do when we record a song, they invented a lot of those things. So it's like beyond intimidating. It's like you just feel like yeah. total like an imposter syndrome. Yeah. Even yeah. just yeah, being there. He's like a god. Yeah. Like how can I even speak? And he that? shows up and I kid you not, this man, like we were, we got off stage rehearsing at the Grammys and he goes over to the janitor. Uh, the, this guy literally had a trash can and a, and a mop, and he goes over to him and starts talking because the guy was so, he was staring at him. And he was obviously such a big Beatles fan. And Paul just goes over and has a, like a 15 minute conversation with the janitor, like walks away from Jay Z and whatever to do this. And we were like, that's Great the way guy, to man. be. Yeah. That's the way to be. Like, incredible guy. Wow. You are now vibing with Mike Shinoda. Magic. That's a very special one of it. I love it. What the hell is going on? Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if you relate with this, but especially in the Fortnite community, I had a lot of difficulty finding teammates that would like, there was like, I guess, there's this problem where players would just say things are random because they're yeah, so used to yes, things being yes. random and BRs, but I'm like, that, that was not random. <laughs> Yeah. You should have done this, this, and that. They're like, oh no, it was just randomness. So a lot of, a lot of, <laughs> I had a lot of communication errors with a lot of players in the scene because I'd be like, this is not a random element. This is totally within yeah. your control. And they're just like, no, this is random. <laughs> wow, this game's so dumb. And one <laughs> something that like, something that I actually playing Valorant actually, when I switched over to Valorant, I played with the TSM boys for that one tournament. Um, I like the fact that they didn't use the word random. It was like, it was literally out of the vocabulary when we were playing. And they was like, like, yeah, we don't use that word. And I was like, I like this. <laughs> Sit up yeah, in your let's, chair. Let's, let's not chalk it. You're like, oh, huh. Yeah. And so that was, that was an interesting experience for me competitively coming from like a battle royale scene and seeing like the different attitude that those players had. Yeah. So follow up question on that. Would, could you ever see yourself competing in Valo? I'm sure you get, you get asked this all the time. <laughs> no. Okay, oh. first time then. I'm dookie. <laughs> no, I am bad. I uh, no. I, I can't. I can't see it only because I don't think I would. Um, I, I don't. I don't think I would be able to to to, to give it my all at the current moment in time. Mm -hmm. I think I really, really enjoy entertaining. Mm -hmm. I think I really, really enjoy um, doing what I do on stream. And I think I've finally reached. I'm, I'm reaching this point in my career where, you know, I was kind of like this enigma and that everyone had like these really high expectations for, and they didn't really get a chance to like learn who I am as a person. They were just like, this Smith guy is crazy at Fortnite, yeah. wow! Like, wowee, he's a crazy gamer. And then I didn't, I didn't like meet those expectations, but now I'm like, oh, this Smith guy's cool. Like, You're so like good at what guy. you do. I, I remember That's, seeing it's like space. natural. It's cool. I remember being a recommended a video on YouTube that had like so many views, it's just like, like, why myth fell off and all this stuff. Oh, and I'm videos. just like, yeah. 
Somebody made a video about this? Like, a what why, the hell? A why an a why a 18 year old kid fell off? It, it's just <laughs> ridiculous. But you you also stream on Twitch. Yeah. Has that experience been challenging at all? You're hopping on you Twitch compared funny, to performing? Part about the challenging part was like is you setting it up, right? Like it's it, you you do your own, and with my background in in drawing and painting, I really wanted to like do it all myself. So I don't. There isn't a thing going on on my stream that I didn't put together myself. Mm -hmm. so that means that the production level is like there's a ceiling. Like it it doesn't get any <laughs> higher production than what I've got. Yeah. And because they they it's all optimized for gaming a lot there's you run into more software bugs if you're a music streamer mm. like my music will cut out like the whole stream audio will just drop <laughs> and then we have an we have have an emote in my chat with like a big red x to look yeah. i can see the chat go red and i'm like oh my audio went out. i gotta go fix it um, yeah. but they know they're like used to it it's like once every time or once every other time it'll go out yeah. so, so you stream the music category when you do your music stuff yeah 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 do, and do, then my valorant streams are like maybe once every couple weeks i'll do a stream mm -hmm. once in a while if i'm feeling really crazy i'll do like a nighttime valorant stream yeah yeah i, I gotta ask i'll be the weak who, link who on this team who is your favorite Valorant agent. Oh my. Okay, so my main is usually Raze. Um, I don't mind being Sage. I don't mind being the healer. <laughs> I need some tips though. What's like a me. good? What's a good like? Wait, who plays Raze? You play Raze. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I need some good like. Satchling is hard. Satchling. It yeah. is. I mean, like, <laughs> give me some tips. For raise, like you just gotta make sure your double sashes are like clean, you know. Like you, you should just go on, go on a custom game, you know, and just, just try out like a lot of different like ways, like double satchel, and uh, make sure like you can stay, like make sure you have control over yourself, you know. So like when you're ulting, like do you ever like try to double satchel? I've tried. Yeah, <laughs> I've tried. No, and yeah. and honestly, I've like my kid, the number one. My number one coach would be my kid. And yeah. He is always like, dude, you need to get into do, go practice double sash, yeah. go practice this and that. Yeah, that's and what I'll tell you. How's your jet? <laughs> we'll support you. <laughs> oh. Yeah, probably worse with jet. Probably a lot worse. You like to op? I can. You can? I can. <laughs> you bust it up. I mean, on my level, we're talking like, yeah. we're talking like bronze level op. So, <laughs> like, it's not. I think you're just being humble. Yeah, no, no, no. you're always nasty, I know. <laughs> oh no, okay, you don't say. I rewrote the code that's controlling the whole game. Wanna start shit dissing me? No way. My triangle button's been missing, I don't play. Dre, I seen a tweet that one of your fans sent out yeah. Um, about you. The tweet was along the lines of, of this young fan saying, I appreciate you so much for what you do in the Valorant scene, being one of like the only black pros yeah. in the scene and how he you, you really motivate him and drive him uh, to like want to game and continue gaming. Uh, when you see stuff like that, is that, is that something that kind of like reassures what you're doing or like is that, is that yeah, something yeah. That, you, that you care about or think about often? Like being in the pro scene, like there's a lot of ups and downs, you know? And like sometimes you can get like really like in your head and like get like yeah. really like sometimes it's just hard, you know? Mm -hmm. And like seeing those messages, like it really uh, just motivates me to like keep, you know, doing what I'm doing and like trying to trying to set a good example for like uh, like black people and stuff and like give them someone to look up to, you know? Because yeah. I feel like that's how like a lot of people like in esports, like they get into the scene, you know? They have someone to look up to and yeah. you know, that's, that's like how, how I'm trying to be. And uh, hopefully, like, what I'm doing can, like, if I set a good example and keep playing, like, uh, hopefully there'll be more, like, black FES players. And, yeah, like, people have more, like, black players will have more people to, like, relate to. Mm -hmm. And it'll, it'll just be easier for them to, like, you know, get into the scene and stuff. Yeah. Nah. Ray, did you have somebody that you looked up to, whether it was gaming or even not gaming, that you well, were like, oh, yeah. that's, like... Yeah, yeah. I mean, when I was getting into gaming, like, I was looking, there's a professional fighting game player named Sonic Fox. And he was like, he was like the best, like at the time, like he was like the best Mortal Kombat player. And he was just really inspiring to see that. And also my mom was like someone that really inspired me, you know, like she's a really smart woman. And uh, she like, like growing up, it was like pretty hard. And like, she always like, so she helped me like keep my mind in the right spot, you know, and not get discouraged. And like, she was a single mom with like four kids, you know, seeing her work and like bring, bring food on the table every night, like solo, like she was working two jobs all day, you know, and that really just inspired me to like, 
want to be like her, you know, like want to like do the best I can, to, like uh, give someone, to, give people like, you know, someone to look up to. Love so that. Um, I've been playing FPS games since 2003, mm -hmm. um, and as far back as I could remember, there it's it's very very rare. Yeah. There aren't many professional black players, right. and it's very unique. Mm -hmm. Is there like maybe? I don't know, maybe a reason or a thought you've had that it's not as... I feel like, uh, like, I feel like when I was growing up, like, uh, a lot of the games that I got introduced to, like, by my dad and stuff, like, I, that's pretty much how I got into gaming my dad. Uh, it was, like, a lot of, like, like, a little bit of, like, Madden and 2K and, like, a lot of fighting games, right? Yeah. But there wasn't, like, it wasn't really, like, a lot of, like, PC, like, shooters and stuff, yeah. you know? Like, you don't really grow up, like, you're, you're on the Xbox and stuff, you don't grow up, like, on the PC mm -hmm. shooters and stuff, and I feel like that's, like, a big reason of why there's not, like, as many uh, black uh, FPS players, you know, they're all in like like fighting games. Like it's all, oh, okay. it's dominated by like black black players. And like you know, Madden and 2K, like the pro scenes, yeah. are a lot of black players, you know. And yeah, like if they're like if I like like uh, like me and like Myth, like other FPS players, like if we set good examples and like we get like, you know, they'll they'll start to be more uh, black players in the future for sure. You know, hitting back on that question, it's honestly been something I've been thinking about a lot because I, I've, I've come into accepting the role that I'm somebody that young black men and women look up to in the space for, for like doing what I do and being gamers. And I haven't fully thought out this idea. I'm still working on getting the right answers. I'm still doing a lot of research, but I feel like a big part of the problem is like, it's a socioeconomic thing where there are a lot of, um, a lot of underrepresented people that are, you know, they, they don't know where their next meal is gonna be. I grew yeah. up in a community where there were a lot of kids where if they didn't come to school, they weren't eating lunch, like, or they weren't eating for the day. And I think when you, you know, playing, playing video games on an empty stomach and trying to like envision it being what you're gonna be doing in the future is a really like, yeah, it's, it's really far-fetched. It's like really unrealistic, yeah. so. I almost like say like it's I, whenever I give my story I'm like it's like a privilege that I was able to be where I'm at because I had a, a mom and a dad or someone that was putting food on the table and had a roof over my head so I was able to invest the time yeah. into yeah. gaming and that's really where it strikes home for me and, and trying to bring people and bring black people and just underrepresented people in general into gaming. I walk what I talk I was made from the pressure like a diamond out of rock call a passport protected I got the shit locked put my hands on a mic, put my foes in a box, not a word you can tell me, came to give them hell, these bars full of scars from the punches that they dealt me, now I'm bullet training on tracks that never fail me, pull apart the bars, nothing ever can derail me. And you mentioned there are not very many Japanese rappers, especially when you were starting out. Um, what were the things that kept motivating you? Like what, but were there people there? Like what sort of kept you going instead of being like, well, I'm Japanese, can't be a rapper. Yeah. <laughs> in any industry, they want to bank on things that have already been a winner. Mm. Yeah. Right? Definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. So when they see something that doesn't fit in the box, they go like, oh, it's too risky. Like, I can, I can invest my money and time over here yeah. where it looks more familiar. And so we were never familiar. Um, and we had a moment where the, our somebody from our label in the early days while we were making hybrid theory he wanted us to he he in fact took our singer chester aside and was like hey man listen like i can just like pluck you out of this band and we can make a new band around you and you'll be the dude like you don't need these guys like yeah. just let it let me just this just for food for thought you know like you can we can make a band of anybody you want and it it's because it's all about you and he told us, Chester came back to us and he was like, hey, like our guy like said this to me. And he's like, in the same, almost like the same conversation he had suggested that I be like a keyboard player or something in the band. We, I remember I said, he told us a story about it. He, we were like, well, what did you do? He said, I told him to fuck off. <laughs> it's like, this is your, bro, this is like your band. Like you started yeah. this band. He's like, yeah. this is the only thing I want to do. I tried it other ways, it doesn't work. This is this one is gonna work, and we we all had to have that kind of vision of like even if they shelf us, even if they like, even if they end our careers in some way, shape, or form, like we're gonna do it our way, no matter what. Yeah, from what it sounds like, um, you guys got along pretty well and sort of had each other's backs. Mm. 
Was that the was that always the case with Lincoln Park? Yeah, I mean, surprisingly so. Like everybody has disagreements. We had our disagreements about stuff that sometimes was small, but sometimes it was fundamental. Like we'd have big disagreements about, you know, the direction of an album we were writing. Like that's a huge disagreement, right? Mm-hmm. But in the context of that, like we could still be respectful and have right. civil conversations, right? You, that's that's I think that's talking about the team thing. Yeah, that's so important. Like being able to like talk to your teammates like the right way where information is actually like, you know, thought about and it's not like like everyone's attacking each other, you know? And like having that like bond, like I feel like that's why it's really important to get along with your teammates and like see things in the like same direction. And if you can, like like there's a lot of mutual respect so everyone can like talk and explain like the issues and stuff. And I feel like the top teams, like they do that like pretty well right now. Like that's like one of the most important parts of being on a team. Have you ever watched much like VCT or like uh, Valorant Pro Play? Okay, oh, and I, I, I've watched a bit and it's it's like, I'm at that point where I can follow, I can just follow it. Like I'm, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I watched a match in another language the other day. Oh, okay, yeah. And I was like, <laughs> okay, like I know what's going on. I don't even know what they're saying. Like I'm yeah. following all this. Mm-hmm. It's like me watching basketball. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I don't really know what's going on or how they're doing it, but they put the ball in the basket. <laughs> yeah. And that's... Yeah. I think my yeah. thing is, like, I can see the amount of strategy and training that goes in, into executing mm-hmm. what just happened. And then also, there is that magic of, like, in any team sport or team environment where there's an intuition, it's like game sense, mm-hmm. like where you just know what's happening kind of as, before it happens or as it's happening and you don't even see it, you just know it's yeah. happening. Yeah. That's really remarkable to me. I feel like that's the thing, like the, when the mainstream really starts, as the mainstream really starts to get a familiarity with like that, that's, that's the growth of esports. Yeah. It's when people like can appreciate the almost like the complexity. Oh yeah, training. I've actually never thought about that before. Yeah, I mean, that, that's it's one a valid thing. point. Yeah, I think that's what makes an esport great is, I think you should be able to watch an esport without really knowing how to play and still be able to enjoy it. Yeah. And I think Valorant's done a good job of that. Like, I don't really play, but it's still fun to watch. Yeah. yeah. Um, Masters is coming up swiftly for Valorant. Yeah. And I'm always excited about Masters because it's, a, it's an opportunity to see different regions kind of go up against each other and you kind of get like these expectations for different regions. Like a lot of people, I remember going into it, like a lot of the, um, the, the Asian teams were hyped up to be like these really aggressive players in the past. And then you get to see their play styles go up against like a North American uh, team, or North American teams, which I think are, are a bit slower, maybe a little bit more methodical. So, I mean, I don't know if, about you guys, but I'm really excited to see if North America will like have uh, a dominant performance again. Yeah as they've had uh, somewhat in the past, or do you have any thoughts on that at all? Yeah, I mean, like... Specifically? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, like, for NA, like, I feel like NA is, like, one of the most exciting regions. Like, the personalities in NA, like, they're just, like, top notch. Like, everyone has a personality, and the play styles are, like, it's crazy, you know? We're a bit of a powerhouse yeah, region. Yeah, yeah. Not gonna lie. In the past year, like, uh, I feel like NA has been, like, dominated by, like, like two, two teams at a time, like, Sentinels or, like, TSM or, like, 100 Thieves. But now, like, the scene has grown so much. Like, there's, like, almost every team in, like, playoffs, like, the, anyone can beat anyone, you know? That's, and, yeah. Yeah, and the skill ceiling has, like, rose, like, a lot. Like, people are making roster changes and getting, like, much better. And I, I feel like uh, it's going to be really exciting to, like, see NA, like, go to Masters and, like, see, like, how we've grown compared to, like, the other regions and stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we don't like to talk about the last one. <laughs> NA took an L, right? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we, went, <laughs> we, we went out. We went out early, <laughs> but we're, we're coming back. Quick little vacation. Yeah. <laughs> control C, control V, don't sleep. Wild like Villanova over a dope beat. Style between a whole soul and OG. Tell them focus on goals over the goal team. All right, we're going up. Could be sketchy. I will rip the light from them. Come on. Light planted. We tend to die. Enemy spotted A. For you. One enemy remaining. Reloading. Your tactics fail. Nice. 
Oh. I feel like that went very well. Oh, actually.